This is the cheapest FPV drone on the internet. It costs less than $84. First test is let's see if it flies. There's no video. This is a plug and play. What that means is you're meant to just wire up a receiver, plug it in and fly it. I shouldn't have to have checked the video to make sure that the video transmitter was actually working. So we're now having to do infield repairs to see what the go is. Infield repairs have failed and it's still not working. So it's also starting to rain. I need to get out of here. We'll come back to my exploits in the field a little later on, but first let's check out an unboxing of the TCM MRC over frequency 220. It came in an Sheen wizard box and it certainly wasn't a wizard. The props that you see are these really big chunky things. $5 cashback card from the manufacturer, which wasn't too bad, but I'm not gonna use it. Zip ties, they'll come in handy. The battery strap, which you're definitely going to need. Uh, prop nuts, wrenches, and they don't work because they're cut too big or too small. Some feet to stop it scratching on the concrete and extra screws, which are pretty handy. You can never have too much hardware. And now let's check out the quad itself. I was quite impressed with its construction quality and soldering. That looked pretty good. The motors seem to be quite nice as well. Overall, frame looks pretty good. There's a dipole antenna, which blew my mind to think you'd put a dipole on it, but anyway. XT30 and that connector is a S bus connector for your receiver, but we're going to be putting Express LRS on it. Overall, it looks to be a pretty good quad, so let's get it set up in beta flight. I wired in a Happy Model EP2 RX running Express LRS 2.3, and we've gone into beta flight to do the setup. It comes with beta flight 4.2. Zero. So all I needed to do was select which port the receiver was connected to, go through, add in my channels, make sure the receiver was connected up. In terms of basic specifications, the motors are 220 300kV, so we are going to be running 4S on this. The flight controller and ESC stack actually comes from the Esheen Tyro 129. The flight controller itself is an F405 processor with an MPU 6000 gyro, which is pretty good. It also comes with a barometer, so you're going to be able to have support for iNav if you wanted to. And there's also I2C ports, which are used for connecting a compass. There's five different UARTs on it, so there's going to be plenty of options to connect up all your different peripherals such as connecting in ExpressLRS, Crossfire, or Ghost to one of the full UARTs as opposed to using SBUS. It also has a 10 volt 1.2 amp BEC, which is really good if you wanted to convert this to HD0 or to DJI down the track. The ESC is the Esheen Tyro 129 ESC, which has 40 amps of continuous current with a burst of up to 60 amps. It is rated for two to 6S, so if you did want to upgrade this to 6S down the track, that's absolutely possible. The firmware is Heli S, so that is going to be able to run BlueJ, and that's something we're going to do in a later video. The VTX that arrived DOA was a Top RC Mini XF5805, which is up to 300 milliwatts and 37 channel. Get out the field with the cheapest FPV drone, and we're going to hopefully get it to fly this time. And I also found that the camera wasn't plugged into the flight controller correctly, so I had to cut off the connector solder that to the inputs on the flight controller and we now have a proper video source. Now in terms of the video transmitter, I didn't necessarily want to make these upgrades initially because I really wanted to see how the stock VTX with that really horrible dipole antenna worked. But unfortunately with the dead on arrival VTX, I had to upgrade it. So I've gone with the iFlight uh, Success VTX. It has 800 milliwatts and I've also used a Gep RC Pagoda, which is an MMCX antenna. We're now gonna see just how well this flies. I'm flying with a Big Daddy FPV 1300 milliamp hour 4S battery with a 100C rating. In terms of how the over frequency flies, it isn't too bad at cruising. However, you can see the prop wash there as we come back down into it on these different maneuvers. It doesn't really like prop wash at all. And I'm not sure whether that's down to the tune or it's these chunky boy props. I'd hazard a guess the chunky boys are probably the major cause of this quad's problems. Snap rolls and flips, you do get quite a bit of bounce back. However, it does like these long punch out maneuvers as well. And it's pretty quick. 
you'd expect this to be quite fast from the pitch on these props it certainly keeps it moving now you can see the ground is absolutely soaked and i did crash into that earlier in the day but it survived and pretty happy about its durability overall it seems to handle tight turns as well and it does have quite a bit of amp draw and again the biggest thing that we can do to improve this quad is going to be changing these props out as you can see those snap rolls there is a bit of bounce back and it just yeah, it doesn't like those it's not much of a problem with the Heli SESC that handles it perfectly but we're going to do some upgrades and see how we get on I'm going to spend $100 upgrading the cheapest FPV drone. Let me know in the comments below how you would spend that 100 bucks to upgrade this. I'm guessing propellers should be first on the list. I'm Darren from Everything Micro FPV. Until next time, don't forget to send it.